Welcome back, AP Psych Brainiacs. It's time for another episode of Why Is My Brain Like This? Today's topic, drugs. Yeah, we're going there. Caffeine, nicotine, LSD, alcohol. If it messes with your brain, we are talking about it. And no, this isn't just a Just Say No to Drugs campaign. This is AP Psychology. We're diving into the science behind psychoactive drugs, chemicals that alter your brain's communication system. This video falls under Unit 1, Topic 1.3, The Neuron and Neural Firing because understanding psychoactive drugs means understanding how they mess with your brain and neurotransmitters. So, are you ready? Grab your notes, fire up those neurons, let's jump in. Whether it's your morning coffee, a prescription painkiller, or something far more intense, psychoactive drugs can seriously impact how your brain works. To make sense of it all, psychologists typically group psychoactive drugs into four major categories. Stimulants, depressants, hallucinogens, and opioids. Stimulants typically cause increased neural activity, meaning your neurons are firing more rapidly and frequently than usual. This boosts alertness, energy, and mood. It can also ramp up your heart rate, blood pressure, and even your anxiety levels. Common examples include caffeine, nicotine, cocaine, and amphetamines. Now, if you remember from our last video, we talked about how neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin get released into the synapse, the tiny gap between neurons. They deliver their message by binding to receptor sites on the next neuron. But what happens after that message is delivered? The brain doesn't just let those neurotransmitters hang out forever. Instead, it reabsorbs them back into the original neuron, a process called reuptake. Think of it as the brain's cleanup crew, coming in to recycle those chemical messengers. Now, what does this have to do with psychoactive drugs? Some drugs, like cocaine, act as reuptake inhibitors, especially for dopamine. That means they block the cleanup crew. The result? Dopamine stays in the synapse longer, keeping that feel-good message going stronger and longer than usual. Feels amazing in the short term, but your brain doesn't love being blasted with dopamine nonstop, which is why the high is usually followed by a not-so-fun crash. Depressants do the opposite of stimulants. Instead of revving things up, they slow down neural activity. They can make you feel relaxed, drowsy, and less inhibited but they also slow your reaction time and can impair judgment. Common examples include alcohol, barbiturates, and benzodiazepines like Xanax. In small amounts, they can make people feel calm or social. Too much though, you're looking at confusion, drowsiness, and potentially suppressed breathing, which can be dangerous or fatal. Hallucinogens significantly alter perception, mood, and cognition, often leading to sensory distortions or experiences that are not based in reality. Users may see, hear, or feel things that aren't actually present, a phenomenon known as hallucination. Examples include LSD, psilocybin, aka magic mushrooms, and some types of marijuana. These substances primarily affect serotonin pathways. Some people report deep spiritual experiences. Others, well, they just feel like their hands are melting and the floor is breathing. And finally, opioids. These drugs mimic endorphins, your brain's natural painkillers, by binding to the same receptors and blocking pain signals, while also producing feelings of pleasure, relaxation, and euphoria. Examples include heroin, morphine, fentanyl, and prescription painkillers like Oxycontin. Medically, they can be highly effective for short-term pain relief, but they can also carry a high risk of tolerance, dependence, and addiction. High doses can also slow breathing, which can be life-threatening. And when someone stops taking opioids, withdrawal symptoms like nausea, chills, muscle pain, anxiety can kick in. Psychoactive drugs can also be classified based on how they interact with neurotransmitters, either enhancing their effects or blocking them. That's where the terms agonist and antagonist come in. An agonist is like a neurotransmitter stunt double. It mimics the real thing and activates the receptor, encouraging neural firing. Think of opioids like heroin and morphine. They're endorphin agonists, meaning they bind to your brain's natural pain relief receptors. The result? Pain relief, and often a wave of euphoria. An antagonist, on the other hand, is a blocker. It fits into the receptor site, but doesn't activate it. Instead, it just blocks the neurotransmitter from doing its job. Some antipsychotic medications, for example, are dopamine antagonists. They reduce dopamine activity to help with disorders, like schizophrenia, where there's often too much dopamine flooding the system. All right, let's lock in with a quick recap. Psychoactive drugs alter brain function by changing the activity of neurotransmitters, either boosting, blocking, or mimicking their effects. Tattoo this on your psych brain. 
Psychoactive drugs fall into four major categories, stimulants, depressants, hallucinogens, and opioids, each one with distinct effects on the nervous system. Stimulants, like caffeine and cocaine, increase neural activity, raising alertness, energy, and mood, but can also increase anxiety and crash afterward. Depressants, like alcohol and Xanax, slow down neural activity, reducing inhibition and reaction time, but too much can suppress vital functions like breathing. Hallucinogens, like LSD and psilocybin, distort perception and sensation, affecting serotonin and leading to hallucinations or altered states of consciousness. Opioids, like heroin and morphine, mimic endorphins, blocking pain and triggering euphoria, but come with a high risk of addiction, tolerance, and withdrawal. And lastly, agonists mimic neurotransmitters to activate receptors, while antagonists block them, interfering with normal neural signaling. All right, thanks for watching AP Psych Brainiacs. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that next video. And as always, when in doubt, trust the data, not your gut. See you next time.